Yes, people, what's happening? Nice one for coming back to the Fuse UK. It's much appreciated as always. Next guest on the show tonight. I've been looking forward to doing this one. Been waiting for him to come on the scene. He's on the BKFC, BKFC scene now. It's Matthew Hodgson who's going to be fighting Mason Shaw. I remember watching a um, good fight with Matthew. Uh, he fought Damon Hendry in Sheffield and like it got stopped due to could probably could have went on. But um he was devastated as well when it got stopped. But what a fucking fight, man. And here he is now. I'm gonna bring him in from the background. What's happening, Matt, mate? You good? Hey on, mate, you all right. Yeah, I'm good, mate. Are you? Yeah, very well. Um yeah, I was been waiting for this, mate. Yeah. Been getting ready. I was wondering, mate, we'll start it about like Asking what's been happening before, obviously, the fight that's coming up at BKFC 55. Have you just been keeping busy in the gym, ready, waiting for the call? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, obviously, I signed the contract for BKFC uh, quite a while ago and yeah. just been waiting, mate. Just been sat in the gym, um, ticking over, really. Um, I had a, and it injured my right hand, so I got a, got a fracture on it. Um, so I've, I've let that heal. Um, it's healed properly. So we're um, we're back banging hard now with that hand again. There's no pain with it, no nothing. Um, and then obviously just waited. Then I got a little call off Scott McHugh um, about fighting a kid on his show uh, for a belt. And I just thought it would in four ounce gloves as well. So I thought, why not? You know, we'll test this hand out. Um, so yeah, went went to Scott McHugh's show for to Seattle Best. His name was. Mm-hmm. Um, fought him, stopped him three times in first round, and that was it. We're done. So tested my hand out, mate. Banged him hard, and uh, and came out with a win and that bit of confidence again after having that time off and uh, and ready to go again. So yeah. What's 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 the plans then? That you planning on just was it just like a fight to keep you ticking over? Like the plans are for Bear, Stain Bear, Knuckle on there. Yeah, that's it, mate. That that was just. Uh, keep me ticking over and keep me busy and obviously just to test this hand out and make sure that it were it were healed properly you know and there were no pain um and that's exactly what we did and we came out um and it felt really really good there were no aching or nothing so i was ready to go um but yeah the plan is mate bare knuckle that's it um i've gone gone to the days now of my wrestling days and my pro mma and all that because uh i'm knocking on a bit you know what i mean i can't do it anymore and these these young up-and-coming talent that's uh it's there now, mate. I'll, uh, I'll test you, especially at my age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you seem to love all the, the bare knuckle fighting, though, because you love a scrap, don't you? You absolutely love oh, a scrap. Right. Yeah, we do, mate. You know, and I think over years I've I've scrapped more and been in some wars. Um, as I've got a little bit older and the certain people I've been around and training with, I've, I've tended to be a bit more technical now, you know, especially in bare knuckle as well. You've got to be a little bit more technical and picky shots a little bit more you know yeah of course mate well one half a jab can split your face in half can't it that's it you say you split your face break your hands you know um and obviously you want a good scrap in there but you want to be coming out unscathed always as little damage as possible don't you yeah definitely mate and obviously 18th of november you're going to be fighting mason shaw but what's your thoughts on mason shaw because i know he was in the promotion you used to be in as well uh bkb you were probably in the same time weren't you yeah we were um yeah i've uh utmost respect for mason mate i've never never had a bad word said against him um and we've always spoke on, on on good terms every time we've seen each other we were supposed to fight on bkb quite a while ago and i can't remember if it was me that got injured or him that got injured but something happened and it never came off um so i kind of knew that at some point we were going to cross paths you know uh, yeah. this promotion or, or whatever um but no it's it, it's got the makings mate of a, a fight at night and a, an absolute war you know um and i think that we're both going to go in there 100 percent and you know may the best man win on the night um that's it so but yeah i mean as soon as it were uh, as soon as we signed the contract he actually messaged me mason and they were like uh i heard we're gonna go at it and i'm like we well, are yeah, mate yeah and he says listen he says have a good camp um you know, all the best to you, good luck, and I'll uh, I'll see you fight night. And, uh, and that's what it is, mate. You know, we've got respect for each other, and uh, obviously we'll do what we're doing there and put a good show on for fans, and then obviously get a pint after together. Yeah, of course, mate. Obviously, you're both two respectful guys as well, so I can't see there being any negativity between you both in, in the fight, like up to the build-up to the fight, sorry. Yeah, 
Well, no, yeah, I'm not really like that, mate. You know, I don't, I don't chat shit on that, and you know, and, and trash talk coming up to the fights because you look a bit of a twat, don't you, mate? When you get banged, you know what I mean. If you get banged out, you know, it's uh, you, look, you look a bit of an idiot. But I've never really been like that. The the only person that's ever made me riled like that is obviously Eric Olsen. You know what I mean, and how he was. Um, yeah. But obviously, we all know what he's like, um, and he does certain things to get in your head. You know what I mean, and. And that's exactly what he did. That, what, what he does with people, um, but uh, but yeah, there's no there's no there's no bad blood or anything between me and Mason, you know. And, and like I say, um, we'll both be training hard, mate, and camp will go well for us both, and we'll put a show in on the night. Yeah, it's good to see, mate. And are you fully? Uh, You've been in camp for a few weeks for this fight now, have you? Yeah, I have. I normally do like ten weeks minimum, you know, twelve week if I can. Um, but yeah, and obviously following on from that fight before, um, I've just um, just carried on. So it's, it's been about ten week camp, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm training with Justin Newell. He, he's my he's my new coach. Uh, we have bonded pretty well, mate. To be fair, um, very knowledgeable lad, um, ex pro boxer, um, and yeah, he's uh, he's pushing me to be absolute limits, mate. And uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to, to obviously moving forward with him and, and showing what uh, what skill set we've got. I think it'll work a bit in your advantage moving, like obviously with the BKFC and that, with your background and fighting style, you know, with being able to hit in the clinch, grab all the fighters round the head and... Yeah, well, that's what you see. Uh, this, it's my my kind of style, mate, you know, and, and obviously when they're coming close and we, and we you know, we, we old and I like to chip away inside, you know, I like to throw little shots and, and obviously that, that clinch at the back of the head is... You know, especially from a pro MMA background as well. You know, you can clinch that back head there like a multi clinch. You know, it's um, it's, it's a nice little, nice little thing just to you know rain some ammo, some uh, uppercuts in, and uh, yeah. you know, and go from there. You know, and, and it stops a lot of lads that way. You know, you see them, and, and if they're not used to doing that, they shout a lot. Some of the lads are, and they don't have mm -hmm. a go out of there. Well, that's it. You see, you know, and if you've got all that back head, mate, it's hard to it's hard to get out of there. You know. Yeah, like you see some of them and they look like trying to like say to the ref and the ref just like, no, like it's it's legal. Yeah. Well, that's it, isn't it? You know, yeah, yeah. And the, the thing is a lot, you can't really train it. You know, when you're boxing and you're sparring, you can't train it. So obviously when you get it put on you, yeah. you don't know what to do. You know, it shocks you a bit. Um, <laughs> and obviously when you're getting uppercuts coming at you underneath, you, you're fucked, are you? <laughs> yeah, definitely, mate. What, um, where is this fight going to be at? Is this going to be a cruise? Uh, it's at 88 this i think it is cruiser yeah 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 because you, you what did you use to fight out have you always fought a cruiser uh i fought at 93 um but i think that's what's that light heavy in this is it or is it is it oh heavyweight it, that. uh well yeah this is 88 so i think cruiser on on other other shows and that has been like 1993 um yeah. Just obviously different weight categories for different shows, isn't it? Um, yeah, they're all different, man. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, no, I don't either. It should all be the same, shouldn't it? But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is 88 kilo, so yeah, it'd be good to come back down to that kind of weight. I would hope I was looking at 84, dropping to 84, um, which is what I used to fight at my MMA. Um, you know, and I feel good at that weight, you know, it's uh, and then obviously we've been 24 hours before weighing you know um you, you get all them you know you rehydrate and you look really well when you go back in you know but 88 i can do it with no water cut which is a better thing for me yeah, of course. um you know do it natural and, and on the diet and obviously then refuel you know the, the best way and what's best for me so it'll be it'll be good to to do it without a water cut you know and see that see that difference yeah has there been any many cruiserweights in the bkfc that you like the look of? Um, there's a few, mate. I mean, obviously, in, in this category, you've got like, um, I think there's John Ferguson there, there is there's Nathan Owens there. I mean, me and Nathan Owens, we do we have trained together. Um, he has a gym just down the road from me. Um, you know, and it, it I think, well, it, his name got put to me quite a while ago, and for me personally, it didn't make any sense. It's like why would we? I mean, it was supposed to be in Newcastle, I think. Um, it got mentioned, but it's like, why put me and Nathan, you know, to you know, we're, we're training together quite, quite, quite close in towns, you know, get us to Newcastle to fight. It don't make any sense. Why not 
get a couple of wins behind us and then get us back in Leeds next year, you know, and maybe fight for like a title eliminator or a title or or whatever, you know. Um yeah. I mean my my aim mate, is you know these lads are stepping stones and and you know we're here to make a statement and that's what we're gonna do. Um and the bottom line is same as everybody that's probably in the game mate is I want that I want that belt. I want that title. Yeah, and it's good as well because even though it's been going a few, yeah, it's still at the beginning, isn't it? So it is, yeah. yeah. You're not having to have 10, 15, 20 fucking fights to get a title shot. You could have three good wins, mate, and you're on a plane over America fighting for a title. Do you know what that's I mean? What you say, yeah. Come that quick. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, you know, and that's 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 the plan, you know. We're uh ticking over, mate, and we're just gonna keep constantly busy, you know, and as soon as one fight's done, we'll be back into camp and tick over again until we get a call again. Um, you know, that's the way it's gonna be. So like I say, you know, I'm my aim, mate, and my mind is on that title. Um, and obviously to fight in America for a title, um, you know, it will be absolutely amazing, you know, and that's that's you know, a fighter's dream, isn't it, you know, to fight abroad and, and do it like that. So especially with a you know, how big BKFC is over there as well. You know, it's it's immense, isn't it? You know. Yeah, that's why all the lads are doing it, and everyone's getting up early in the morning training to get that like American shot. That well, I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's um, it's is it. I mean, I watched um, what it Britain Art and Melanie Shah, is it? Yeah, I watched that last week. Um, you know, pff, they went at it then, didn't they? You know, it's it's mad. I mean, said to our last show, heard it. She went, well, why do women do it? And I'm like. They've just got a scroll who's like us, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're fucking teeth were flying out and all sorts. Yeah, I know, knocked, knocked her so far, didn't she? Mental, mental. I'll tell you what, mate, that Melanie Shaw, she is one tough fucking woman. She's there, tough, mate. mate. Yeah, face after as well. It were all over, wasn't it? But yeah, she's tough, her, mate. Yeah. It's been like that every fight she's been in. Mm, yeah, well, that's it. Well, I mean, she's constantly coming forward, isn't she? You know, yeah. she's not back off at all. She's throwing shots, coming forward, and she just doesn't, just doesn't give anybody a break. Yeah, she laid like three or four shots to land a couple of shots. Like that's, that's it, like, it's mad. Well. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, she looked well, you know, and it was a chance for her to make history there. And you know, unfortunately, you know, she didn't do it on the night, but uh, I'm sure she'll be back. Like, yeah, like I said the other day, we've got plenty of ammunition from the UK to go and get a title for us in 2024, haven't we? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, mate. Yeah, well, it must be a good feeling as well, obviously. To- be at it now, be actually at it and um fight confirmed, it's happening and yeah. being on the being on the BKFC show, mate, and showing them what you've got. Yeah, well that's it, you know, and you know, you can tick over for as long as you want, but until you get that date, until you sign on the dotted line and the contract, that's when you get your focus. It's like something just clicks in you, you know. Um yeah. you can go into the gym and it do ten rounds on bag or whatever, you know, anytime. Um, but obviously until you get that focus, that's when you know you've got to work, you've got to push yourself to your absolute limits, you know. I don't know how hard Mason's training, you know, but what I do know is that I need to be pushing myself to my absolute limit to think I'm training harder than him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, training twice a day, six days a week, you know, and that's what we're doing, mate, and we are getting pushed to my limit. And, you know, th- this is what's going to show on the night, you know, the fitness, the the sparring, you know, everything that you go through as a fighter, um, you know, I mean, a lot of people just think you get in there and have a scrap, but they don't see what you actually go through physically, mentally for 10, 12 weeks before a fight, you know, um, and that's what makes, that's what makes you perform and be that person on that night, you know, everything you go through for them 10 weeks, you know. Yeah. And another question is, um, what is it you love about fighting? Like, why do you fight? Is it like a mental thing to keep you on like a straight mental path? Yeah, well, as I um, as a kid, mate, I I went through a, a lot of bullying. I got bit by a dog when I was two year old. It nearly killed me, um, savaged me, and um, I've got scars scars around my face here, um, and I got picked on me all, all my life, all my all my schools. Um, that I've been to, I've been to five different schools, but only because I've been expelled for fighting. Um, and all I've ever done is fight. Um, I had a bit of a reputation growing up, uh, where I lived. Um, and like you go home and tell your dad, and he's like, Get out of there and kick shit out of him. What's up with you? 
you know, and that's, yeah. that's that's all it ever was. So I grew up like, you know, scrapping all over, uh, scrapping uptown and that, and then um, went through, kind of calmed down a little bit, you know, um, and then I went through a, a family bereavement, mate, um, lost my daughter at eight month old, um, and something just clicked in me, mate, where I was just aggressive. I was just angry and aggressive and, you know, just this, this violent person. And uh, we were looking at prison, mate. Um, so kind of, it was Simon Coney. I don't know if you, I don't know if you know him. He's a um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu based, really. Um, but he, he took me to one side and says, listen, you need to sort your head out here, you know. Um, let's channel you into... MMA and Jiu-Jitsu and let's try and get some of that aggression out. So went down with him to the gym one night and loved it ever since. You know, uh, started off with my Jiu-Jitsu, went to the MMA, um, then did a couple of boxing and then um, and then the bare knuckle. And I got offered a bare knuckle off Danny Mitchell, who was my old coach. Um, and I fought Ash Gibson um, on the first one on, on his show. It was a local show to, to AVT gym and... We, that, that was my first bare knuckle with him and he, he bust my ear so I could put my fingers through the back of my ear and um, blood all over it. There's a, I think the picture he used with a belt on when it's covered yeah, in blood. On your neck. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's that one, yeah, and he, he bust that ear wide open. I can get my fingers in. I have seen the photo and thought, how the fuck has he ended up with all blood down there? But now yeah, yeah, but that's what it was. It was Ash Gibson's big overhand right, yeah, that no matter how many times you fight him, you forget about it. You know, because I fought him like three, four times now, you know. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I could get my fingers through there. So, he split all the way down back of my ear. And that's where blood was from. Um, and that was the first time I'd fought bare knuckle. And, yeah, right up my street, mate. I loved it. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 pretty much why. It keeps me on straight and narrow. keeps me focused, you know. Um, it keeps me aggression down because, you know, thing, things that, you know, what life throws at you, mate, and how you deal with things is... Uh, you know, it's, it's it's mental. You could quite easily go off, go off track, you know, and end up. Well, you know, we know lads in BKF, BKFC, etc., that have been in prison for for fighting and doing stuff. You know what I mean? And and I kind of, I didn't want to go down that route. You know, I've have a good family and two kids and that, and I kind of had to just pull myself out of it and and you know do what was right for me. And that's you know, and that's you know bare knuckle, mate. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's it's one of them, isn't it? It's either what it's one way or the other. It's either like yeah, that's it, you know. jail or dead, isn't it? That's like what that's it is. It. Yeah, yeah, that's it, you know. And you know, I'm lucky that I had close friends around me, um, family, just to say, listen, you know, your head's going west here. You need to pull yourself back and and you know focus on something. And, and that's what I did, um, you know. And and that's why we do it now. When I end it there, it's like I've. Uh, this obviously this is the you know the biggest stage in the world you know for bare knuckle and this is where we wanted to get to um so we're here now you know and now it's time to knuckle down and uh, make a statement mate definitely mate before we wrap it up mate um i was going to ask what can we expect to see from the hammer on the 18th of november well you're going to see a confident strong um Fighter, mate. I ain't going to give too much away, but, uh, you know, we're working on certain things in the gym uh, and we're going to put them to the test. And, um, you know, obviously, I don't really shy away from a fight. If it want, if it's going to be a war, it'll be a war. If it's going to be a technical fight, it'll be technical. You know, we'll just see what happens on the night, but I'll be bringing it 100%, mate. Wicked. I'm really looking forward to it, mate. Um, obviously, your debut in the BKFC, I've seen you... It'd be a bit of a um, bet on you in the bare knuckle game uh, in the UK. So yeah, it's yeah. Coming over. And would you like to uh, shout out anybody, any sponsors, anything like that? Yes, mate, I would. I've written them all down because I've got that many, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, we've got, um, we've got Northern Performance, um, MWA Fencing and Landscape, CBD Guru, uh, We Are PCS, APK9 Training, Bramley Scaffolding, TCG Automotives, um, or, uh, Outlaw Fitness, Outlaw Gains, Carl Stannard, who helps me out a lot, Jordan Story, who helps me out a lot, uh, obviously my coach, Justin Newell, Golden Team Gym, uh, HD Global Athlete Management, mate, that is my management team, um, 
and yeah, and everybody else, mate, that that supports me and watches me and follows me. Um, you know, tickets are on sale for this fight, and um, it's going to be an absolute belter. So uh, yeah, direct message me for them, and uh, and I hope to see everybody there. Wigan, for the people who were watching now, if you're wanting to buy tickets off Matt, I'm going to put his social medias in the description of the video, his Instagram and Facebook, so you can drop him a message. But well, I really appreciate you coming on, bro, and um, we'll stay in touch like yeah, we do yeah. and uh, do something further into camp. Yeah, sound, mate. Yeah, looking forward to it, mate. Thanks for having me. Thank you, mate. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night, bro. Yeah, you too, mate. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Yes, people, really appreciate everybody tuning in there. I'm going to put Matt's um, Instagram and Facebook in the description, so make sure you go over there, follow him on his Ben Uncle journey. He's going to be having his BKFC debut on the 18th of November at BKFC 55, but it, it's nothing new to him. He's been doing this shit for ages, and um, he definitely fucking comes to fight like, and he can fight like fuck, so... Make sure if you can't get a ticket, download the app and watch this on um, the BKFC app on the night. But we're catching up on another podcast in 13 minutes. So don't be going nowhere. But big up Matty Hodgson. Really appreciate him coming on there. The Hammer will be back out on the 18th of November. See you soon, guys.